Okay, everyone. I am pretty sure that almost all of you know that the astrological corpus is mainly divided into three sections. One dealing with mathematical astrology, having two subsections of spherical astronomy and the mathematical astrology. Spherical astronomy, which deals with the speed, motion of planets, and mathematical astrology, which deals with the calculation of dasha, antar dasha, divisional charts, ascendant, etc. After this comes mundane astrology, which is divided into two sections of predicting about the future of nations, humanity, and things based on the transit of planets in the sky first and secondarily based on the omens which are happening and are visible by everyone. Then the third section is natal astrology or personal astrology which deals with the fortunes of people. It comprises of five sections further. First of all, related to the personal horoscope and predictions accordingly. Secondarily, related to the Prashna horoscope, where the moment when you are asking the question is taken, a horoscope is casted for that moment and specifically answers your query in depth. Third is Muhurta, which is for the selection of the right and appropriate time when something needs to be done. Fourthly, it includes omens, personal omens, which are witnessed and experienced by a Closed group of people, generally by the individual itself and the astrologer. And lastly, Vedic astrology includes remedies. Now, anything that you learn in astrology, or I should say generally 70% of the things that you learn in astrology, either work in one of these areas related to natal astrology, predicting fortunes of people. And there are a few things which work in all these, not five, but four areas, right? Omens is a separate department. All these four areas of personal horoscope. They are the basics of astrology. Basics such as the Rashis, the houses, the planets, and other things as such. Say you are learning Dasha. That Dasha will only be useful in natal astrology. Though some people also advise to use the shine prashna charts as well by compressing it to one year or anything as such. However, in experience, it does not found to be working. The real problem or rather say the weakness in accurate prediction, timing of events or anything as such happens because of lack of knowledge with regard to Rashi's. 20-30 years ago, when astrology started, Rashi was developed. I will not use the word researched. Rashi's was developed. Before the development of Rashi, astrology was only mundane. And only Mahurta, finding the auspicious time, was done. As Rashi's were discovered, Post that, it took the form of natal astrology, what we see today. Rashi was such a great discovery that it led to the discovery of the ascendant and then it led to the discovery of the system which predicts personal fortunes of people. Sadly, with the invasion in India, this knowledge is lost and it was only revived some 20 years ago when astrologers actually started giving some importance to Rashi, but that uses of Rashi was very limited. Somehow, we were not able to utilize all the information related to Rashi's, which limited to a great extent our ability for predictions. To cope up with this, I am going to do the Rashi curse. Starting this Sunday, 5th of, sorry, 4th of September, a 15 class course where we will learn Rashi's in depth. Not one, two, three significations about Rashi's, but more than 20, 25 significations related to Rashi's, which will help you in predicting natal horoscopes, which will help you in predicting Prashna, which will help you in finding Muhurta, and which will help you in suggesting remedies as well. Any serious learner of astrology who wish to make good progress, to be able to predict results either for themselves or professionally for people who consult them, should not miss this 15 class groups. 
which is starting just tomorrow. Talking of Rashis, today in this particular video, I want to talk about two particular things related to Rashis, which I am pretty sure many of you are aware of. First of all, <clears throat> is the division of Rashis as per Yugas or the time of, or you know, the major division of Hinduism, right? I am going to share with you the PPT, uh, one slide of PPT that I am going to present in the course that I am making for the course of students. This PPT is going to be 70-75 plus pages though. As you can see here in this PPT, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius are the signs indicating Satya Yuga, which gives easy money. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn indicates Treta Yuga, which gives money by roaming. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius indicates Dwapar Yuga, that gives money by beginners. And Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces are the signs indicating Kali Yuga, which gives no money, but it rather should be taken as which gives money with much difficulties. Now you have to understand this particular point that Kali Yuga is also signified by the Rashi Capricorn. And I have shared this tip some days ago that in this Kali Yuga that is running right now, if you want to achieve at least materialistic success, then the sign Capricorn have to be strong. Talking of Rashis, any Rashi having planet becomes strong. It does not matter if that planet is exalted, debilitated or anything as such. If the planets are exalted, debilitated in the Rashi or they are into their own Rashi, that means if there is Saturn in Capricorn, Mars in Capricorn or Jupiter in Capricorn or anyhow influencing it by aspect or anything as such, Capricorn will be more prominent and such people will be prominently very successful in Kali Yuga and they will be very prominent. But otherwise also having even one planet in Capricorn, be it any planet, specifically gives you much of material success in this Kali Yuga. With this understanding, you should also conclude that following the planet, taking care of the planet, which is situated in Kali Yuga, is the path to fortune, is the path to success, is the path to prosperity and anything as such. So for that example, understand that if you have Venus in Capricorn, then taking care of your wife, giving happiness to your wife is the way to success. The more happier your wife will be, more support from luck and fortune you will get. When it is Mercury in the Capricorn, more happy your relatives are from you, more fortunate you will be. If it is Sun in Capricorn, the happiness of father leads you to fortune. If it is Moon, the happiness of mother leads you to fortune. And if the father or mother are not alive, then a male or female godfather or godmother should be taken. When it is Mars, brothers or you say, you know, well wishes. Close friends, Mercury also indicate friends, Jupiter, service and devotion to Guru, Saturn, keeping your servants and keeping people under you happy, Rahu, people elder than you, not belonging to your eminent family, male people, elder to you is indicated by Rahu and female people, female human, females, elder than you not related to your family is indicated by Ketu. When these planets are situated in Capricorn, you keep these relatives happy and their happiness will give you luck, prosperity, fortune and these things. This is a tried and tested form which I have been using since many years. You should, you should have one such person in your life. Do things as per their advice keep them happy and their happiness and your service towards them, your dedication towards them, your love towards them, your effort to make them happy will determine your personal success. Many a times it is noticed that Capricorn, Venus and Capricorn people, as they keep their spouse happy, those days, you know, businessmen having Venus and Capricorn, the days when their wife is happy, they earn good money, they earn good contacts, they get good rewards. And those days when their wives are mad at them because of some or the other reasons, they suffer substantial loss. This is something that you can easily observe in lives of people. 
and then further use it for the remedial purposes. Now coming to this particular concept of Aries, Leo and Sagittarius indicating easy money, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn indicating money by roaming. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius indicating money by business and Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces indicating no money. The first or difficult money, rather. The first thing is checking the position of second lord and eleventh lord, and in which rashi they are situated in. It directly applies to if you have your second or eleventh lord, second lord for the saving of money. Second lord in Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, you can easily save money. Second lord in Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, money by roaming, you have to save money by investments. You putting your money here for some time, then taking that out money, investing it into some other area for some time. Second Lord in Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, one saves money that they earn through business or personal endeavors for the matter. And people having the Second Lord in Cancer, Scorpion, Pisces, it is difficult for them to save money. Some remedies are needed. The same can be told for the 11th Lord also. 11th Lord for income of money. 11th Lord in Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, one earns money very easily by their influence, name, fame, and their own character itself. It is easy for them to earn money. 11th Lord in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, <clears throat> one earns money by roaming. This essentially indicates professions which include a lot of traveling, a salesman type job, or things as such. People who go to different states to conduct a seminar or you know different places to train people and all these things are indicated. 11th Lord in Gemini, Libra or Aquarius indicates one earning money through business. And Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces indicates one earning money through difficulties. Generally, it indicates one earning money through service, one earning money by going into a job. Now, <clears throat> you have to understand this particular point. If you have your 11th Lord in Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, earning of money by business is what suits you. And in this particular scenario, see, you go to a doctor, they look at your reports. Based on that reports, they find what deficiency, etc. you are having. And based on that, they will give you some supplements or anything that is needed. And by taking that supplements, you will become disease free. So astrology is a study of disease to make you disease free in the same way. Astrology is a study of fortune to make you fortunate. So when you have your 11th Lord in Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn, if you are into a desk job or if you are into a type of job where traveling is not needed, then two things will happen. Either you will not be able to earn that great amount of money that is indicated in horoscope or the second way, the money will not sustain. So what you should do, because Rashi have a very strong uses in remedies, rather I should say, that astrology have three purposes, prediction, guidance, and planning. And Rashi's immensely help you in all these three, in prediction also, in guidance also, and in planning also. Right? So if you have your 11th Lord in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, add some elements of roaming, moving from places to places, going from one place to different place, into your money earning and whatever things you do for earning money and you will earn more money you do it for one consecutive year and then compare your balance sheet for the last year to this year to the next year and you will by my guarantee find a substantial change other than that here the concept of money is taken as a concept of reward. You have to understand the concept of money. So you know what? <clears throat> money is to get those things which you yourself don't have. Money is basically prosperity and happiness also. This is the particular reason Shri, which indicates blessing, Later on is now understood as the goddess of wealth. She is actually not the goddess of wealth, but the goddess of prosperity and happiness. This is what you can achieve with the uses of health. 
sorry, with the users of wealth. So, say seventh lord. Seventh lord indicates marriage. Keeping in mind this money principle, it will indicate prosperity or happiness from marriage. When the seventh lord is in Aries Leo Sagittarius, happiness of marriage comes naturally. One does not have to do a lot of efforts. This will not come when the matchmaking is not there, but with a good matchmaking, it automatically comes. No effort is needed. If the seventh lord goes into Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, the happiness of marriage depends upon traveling together. You can also take alternatively Venus for that because Venus is the karka for marriage, right? So if you have Venus in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, or seventh lord in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, and if you don't go, on holidays, on travel with your wife frequently, at least once in two months, you will start feeling that your marital life somehow or in the other cases is going through a low phase. Generally, people mistake it for black magic or things as such, you know, something is struck in my luck, I don't know what is happening. But the real problem is you are not synchronizing yourself with the Rashis. That is actually creating the problem. You have to identify it and then resolve it. In the case... When the seventh lord goes to Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, which indicates money by business, it basically indicates if the seventh lord is there, it does indicate that happiness and prosperity in marriage will come when you, husband and wife, work together on the same thing. Because business is a mutual corporation meeting the needs and demands, right? So when the seventh lord or Venus goes into Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, including the decisions of your wife, the outlooks of your wife, Including your wife in your business, financial matters, and everything, discussing everything with your spouse is going to greatly help your marital life and saves you from the low types of marital life and saves a lot of things. If you apply these formulas, if you understand these things related to Rashis, this subtle thing related to Rashis, and put it into your nature, behavior, and your relationship, interaction with your spouse or anyone for that matter, it will actually make you capable enough that you will never need to do any remedy for marriage whatsoever. This is what I have found true in my experience without any doubt. Right? So this is what you have to take. Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces indicate when the seventh lord or Venus goes into Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces, it indicates that the language of love for you that for marriage to work, you people have to serve each other. Whatever your wife is destined to do, suppose you people have a rule that it is the wife who chooses the, you know, it is the wife who manages the finances and it is the husband who takes care of the children. Switch your roles. Switch your roles at least two days a week and you'll see that your marital life is always on a high. You are always enjoying it. In the same manner, this can be converted to or understood for any house. And when properly modified, it gives you that happiness and prosperity in your life that you feel that we are being blessed by the gods to enjoy it. The second technique that I want to discuss is the Srishti, creation, sthiti, the sustenance and vinash, the destruction. The signs Aries, Taurus, Gemini and Cancer indicate creation. Leo, Virgo, Libra and Scorpio indicate sustenance and Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces indicate destruction. Two things you quickly need to understand. First of all, this is telling you what you need to do. I am explaining all these things in a very concise manner because generally to make YouTube videos I don't get times but still as my dedication to you know, give something back to the astrological society, I'm making videos, right? So I'm, you know, like explaining it into a concise manner, keeping in mind that you people will elaborate it with your own understanding. Now, take a point. Your heaven, your heaven of success, contentment and everything, you know, your heaven, your, your cave, how you are going to get it? Take our same example, the seventh lord. Seventh lord goes into Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer. It indicates creation. 
you have to create that marital life that you want. You have to create that marital life with constant effort. You have to create that marital life while choosing the appropriate person with help of matchmaking and prashna and other things. When the seventh lord goes to Leo, Virgo, Libra or Scorpio, in this particular scenario, you are already married to someone who is very fit and suitable for you. Generally, in such cases, matchmaking is not needed. 80% of the time, even if such people have married without a matchmaking, while find, while analyzing their horoscope, you will surprisingly find that they actually have a good match. They are already blessed the right person. What they need to do is to sustain the relationship by their constant efforts. And when the seventh lord goes into Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, which indicate the sign of destruction, it is a call that your duty in marriage is to save yourself from the negative forces, save yourself from the things which disturbs you. In this particular configuration, you have to take a note of which things are beneficial for your marital life and which things are disadvantageous for your marital life and you have to keep the negativities away. So you say, you find out like, you know, if the seventh Lord goes into Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius or Pisces and you find out that it is your friends, you know, like sitting with your friends in the evening is actually something which is costing on your personal time. Because of this particular reason, you are not able to give much time to your spouse. In the first two conditions, seventh lord, anyone from Aries to Scorpio, this will not matter much. But seventh lord from Sagittarius to Pisces, you have to identify that sitting with my friends, having my company of friends every day, sitting with them every day in the evening is actually taking a toll on my marital life. And as a attribute of destruction, you have to identify it. And what you need to do is you shift the meeting of friends from daily to once a week. Include your spouse into it. And in such manner, identify anything which is detrimental for your merit, happiness of your marital life. And you have to be the one who changes it or approves it for the benefit of your marital life. Take it for the 10th law. When the 10th Lord goes into Aries, Taurus, Gemini or Cancer, which is a sign related to creation, you should be into a job where you are supposed to create something. Create a flowchart, create an Excel sheet or create anything as such. Invention, etc. These things are the key areas where you should work into your job. You should get one such job which requires you to do such things and then your job will give you happiness. Then your job will give you satisfaction. Then your job give, will give you contentment. Then your job will give you everything that you want. And if you don't do it, you will not know why I am dissatisfied. You will not know that why I am not feeling like, like you know, in a long term, a life where you are not loving your job leads to frustration which then further leads to many issues to eradicate it. You have to keep it in mind. When the 10th Lord goes to Leo, Virgo, Libra or Scorpio, you should have a job which is related to sustenance or rather you should have a job which is related to protection. So protection of data, right? Or protection of anything for that matter, like policemen, army men, protection of country, right? Protection of data, protection of essential things, protection of people, NGO and all these things is what is going to suit you. And when the 10th Lord is in Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius or Pisces, it indicates destruction and you should do well into a job which is related to changing, changing the form of things. You should, you will work better <clears throat> When you are, you will work better in a department where you are supposed to understand something and change it for better, change the shape of things. So let's say the 10th Lord indicates that you should be a teacher. Then if the 10th Lord is in Aries, Taurus, Gemini or Cancer, you should be a someone who is researching. You should be a creator, create books. 
can he research as and all these things when the 10th lord goes into leo virgo libra or scorpio you have to be to sustenance then proper teaching is what is needed you teach and sustain the knowledge which is already produced by others whereas if the 10th lord goes into sagittarius capricorn aquarius and pisces in that particular scenario your duty will be to find the discrepancies in the current teaching module make it better find for the strength and weakness eradicate the weakness make a new product make it better right so creation is like developing something developing a software sustenance is running that particular software right by taking you know by charging money from the clients upkeeping of the software and everything and destruction is finding the bugs into the software eradicating the bugs into the software and advancing it for the further uses changing the you know changing the look and feel of the software with the changing times and adding new abilities into it in the same manner if you have your second lord in aries taurus gemini or cancer the prime thing that you should do is create new sources of income if the second or 11th lord goes into leo virgo leo virgo libra or scorpio then you already have good income sources or when you were born your family or when you started your professional life in the starting you already had good sources of income which are sufficient for you what is needed on your part is to sustain them only and if the second and 11th lord goes into sagittarius capricorn aquarius or pisces in that particular scenario income is not a problem income sources are not a problem you have to be careful about those areas which are causing you loss in income those areas from where the expenditures are being made and you have to destroy those loopholes or those bad things which are causing the money loss and this will be the path to success if you are having your 11th lord into sagittarius capricorn aquarius or pisces in that particular scenario finding new sources of income is not a problem sustaining the source of income is also not a problem but those bad things related to uses of money such as bad investments etc these things are going to be a problem hence be careful about it and with the help of astrology once you know where the problem is where is the problem and where is the opportunity where are the chances of improvement what do you do you imply it and with this particular implication you become more fortunate you become more lucky and you get things easily with lesser effort this is how astrology helps you and the knowledge of astrology helps you in your day to day life this is the particular reason in ancient vedic gurukuls jyotish was taught not for this particular reason that everyone should become astrologer but for this particular reason that with the knowledge of astrology at least people should be able to make their lives good and the lives of their near and dear people good right thank you for watching the video have a good day